the genome is a storybook that's been edited for a couple billion years. And you can take it to bed like a thousand and one Arabian nights and read a different story in the genome every night. But how do you read what's inside a molecule? Well, if it's DNA, if you turn it so you can look at it from just the right angle, you will see in the middle what look like steps in a ladder. Each step is made up of two chemicals, cytosine and guanine, or thymine and adenine. They come always in pairs called base pairs, either C and G, or T and A for short. This is, step by step, a code, three billion steps long, the formula for a human being. And what it's telling us is so surprising and so strange and so unexpected. 50% of the genes in a banana are in us. What do you from a banana? I feel, and I feel I can say this with some authority, very different from a banana. You may feel this. I eat different. a banana. All the machinery for replicating your DNA, all the machinery for controlling the cell cycle, the cell surface, for making uh, nutrients, all that's the same. We asked Dr. Robert Waterston, a pioneer in mapping DNA, to show us the way it used to be done. The original ladders for DNA sequence, we actually read by putting a little uh, letter next to the band that we were calling and then uh, writing those down on a piece of paper and or into the computer after that. Uh, it's horrendous. And we haven't mentioned the hardest part. This here magnified 50,000 times as an actual clump of DNA, chromosome 17. Now, if you look inside, you will find, of course, hundreds of millions of A's and C's and T's and G's, but it turns out that only about 1% of them are active and important. These are the genes that scientists are searching for. So somewhere in this dense chemical forest are genes involved in deafness, Alzheimer's, cancer, cataracts, but where? This is such a maze, scientists need a map. But at the old pace, it would take close to forever. A C and then an A. And then came the revolution. In the last 10 years, the entire process has been computerized. That cost hundreds of millions of dollars. But now, instead of decoding only a few hundred letters by hand in a day, together these machines can do a thousand every second. And that has made all the difference. This is something that's going to go in the textbooks. Everybody knows that. Everybody, when the Genome Project was being born, was consciously aware of their role in history. Getting the letters out is, has been described as finding the blueprint of a human being, finding a manual for a human being, finding the code of a human being. What's your metaphor? Blueprints and all these fans, it's just a parts list. It's a parts list with a lot of parts. If you take an airplane, a Boeing 777, yeah. I think it has like 100,000 parts. If I gave you a parts list for the Boeing 777, in one sense, you'd know a lot. You'd know 100,000 components that have got to be there, screws and wires and you know, rudders and things like that. On the other hand, um, I bet you wouldn't know how to put it together, and I bet you wouldn't know why it flies. Well, we're in the same boat. We now have a parts list. That's what the Human Genome Project is about, is getting the parts list. If you want to understand the plane, you have to have the parts list, but that's not enough to understand why it flies.